recently NVIDIA launched the new Jetson Aura Nano Super and this little board is putting down some really good performance especially on the GPU side of things because after all it is kind of an AI development kit and it is a nice upgrade over the original Aura Nano. We've got faster RAM and a higher TDP on that chip and it was kind of a surprise to see the founder and CEO of NVIDIA launch this product, Jensen Wong. I think I might have cooked it a little bit too long. It shrunk. The little tiny Jetson Nano. NVIDIA was kind enough to send over the Orin Nano Super for review, but to my surprise, they actually sent another package, and this one I'm going to be giving away. And the best part about this Jetson Orin Nano Super development kit is it's signed by Jensen Wong himself. So we've got his real signature here, and yeah, like I mentioned, I'm going to be giving it away. All of the details will be coming by the end of the video, but it's super easy to enter. You don't even have to be subscribed or anything like that. I'm just gonna ask one thing of you, but before we get into those details, I did wanna jump into this board's operating system and take a quick look. With this board, they did tack a super on the end of it, and really what makes it super is the ability to go up to 25 watts. So max end performance here, and with the older Aura Nano, we could only go up to 15 watts. Now keep in mind, you can actually upgrade the firmware on your original to hit that 25 watt mark, but the RAM on this is still gonna be a bit faster. On the CPU side of things, we've got six ARM cores up to 1.7 gigahertz, but that's not what makes this special. It really comes down to the GPU, 32 tensor cores and 1024 CUDA cores packed into this small form factor board. And with everything going on in the tech space right now, this is definitely marketed as an AI device, but there's really no reason you couldn't jump in here and use this as a fun little desktop setup. And that's exactly what I've been doing. Now, uh, I've got some stuff that I want to test here, and one recent new breakthrough for emulation was the fact that RPCS3 is now available for ARM devices, and I got it to work here. I am kind of blown away by the performance. Now, it's not going to run every single game here, but we will test some out, and I'll give you a look at that, because it's pretty impressive given that we're running this on an ARM chip, and it's a native ARM version. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some AI demos here that are packaged along with the software. First up, we've got synthetic data modeling, and this is using the Omniverse Replicator. In real time, this creates synthetic data, and this would be great for robotic vision for avoiding obstacles and things like that. On the original non-Super Aura Nano, this ran at about 6 to 7 FPS. Right here, we're at 13 on the Super. The next one we have here is the PeopleNet Detection Transformer, or DETR. And as you can see on screen, this could be utilized in retail to detect how many people are in the room or at the counter, whatever you want to set it up as. On the original Orin, it actually ran at around 8 FPS. On the bigger AGX Orin, which is thousands of dollars, it runs at about 30. On the new Super, we're sitting around 14 FPS. So it is a nice little bump over the original Orin, and for its use case scenario, even at 8 FPS, this can be utilized, but having just a higher frame rate does help out. But one thing to keep in mind, when these demos are running, individually or together, that GPU is pegged out, so there's not much left that we can do with the GPU while these are running. There is some headroom with the CPU, but just keep that in mind. So I've been messing around with the Aura Nano Super quite a bit and just kind of using it as an everyday desktop system powered by an ARM chip. And it's pretty decent. I mean, you can do web browsing, photo editing, you could even do some video editing. But one thing that I tested in my original video was PS3 emulation. This is RPCS3. It's the native ARM version they just released. But at the time of making this video, I was not able to update it. On their website, it says it's unavailable. So basically what we're gonna do here is take a look at what's already been run on this. I went through and I tested about 14 different games. These were a few that I could get running pretty decently. A lot of the stuff would get into the menu and crash, but I'll tell you the biggest issue here is the CPU. We've got six cores here, which isn't bad, but it only clocks up to 1.7 gigahertz. And when trying to compile the shaders or compile the PPU modules before the game starts, it takes anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes for each game that I've tested. And while doing that, it maxes all six cores out at 100%, so it's kind of hard to do anything while that's going on. And it's still pretty early for the ARM version of RPCS3 on Linux. I do expect to see an increase in performance down the road. This is Tekken 6. It's not a super hard PS3 game to run, but to see it running so well on an ARM chip, in my opinion, is pretty impressive. When loading into a match or a stage for the first time, uh, it will compile shaders and you'll see it pop up down in the lower left hand corner. Kind of falls on its face initially, but you know, going through, it kind of evens itself out. 
set it that lower resolution, and I've got basically all the settings at relax, so it's not perfect emulation by any means. And I'll tell you, I even tried to go lower than this. So basically anywhere from like 320 up to 720 is around the same kind of performance because we've got that Tegra GPU, which does a decent job. But this emulator does rely more on that CPU. And we've got lower clocks here than other boards on the market. But even though they're lower clocks, they are putting out some really great performance. Even something like Ninja Gaiden Sigma runs really well here. But I did have a lot of latency with this game. My controller was kind of all over the place. And by the way, I did try an Xbox controller. But since I'm on Linux, I had to resort to using a different controller. I usually just go with that X input. But this is SDL input. I'm not sure what's going on here, but yeah, I mean, it's actually kind of hard to play this game because the latency is pretty bad, and I am using a wired connection. So both of those games do run better than I thought they would, but they're easier to run on basically any system. I did want to take it up a bit, and as you can see with Skate 3, this is not doing a great job at all. And it really comes down to CPU performance with this one. If you take a look over on the left-hand side, all of our cores are maxed out. And I wasn't expecting it to run these games at full speed all the way, but we did get a few that ran really well. Overall, I do think that the Aura Nano Super is a great performing board, and with the price point, it's kind of hard to beat this when you're talking about a small form factor ARM-based board putting out this kind of performance. This is coming in at $249, but like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do have one that I'll be giving away, and it's really easy to enter the giveaway. The only thing you need to do is leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite NVIDIA product is or was. It can be a future product as long as we've got a little idea of what's coming out, and on February 1st, 2025, I'm going to use a random comment picker. I'll contact you from there and make sure it's my verified account on YouTube and then I'll ship it on out to you. I'll tell you what my favorite product is. It's not an RTX 4090 or an upcoming 5000 series. It's the original Nvidia Shield TV. Really wish they would come back to the market with the Shield TV. It's just one of my favorite things that they've ever released. I personally used it for years. I made a ton of videos on it, emulation, cloud gaming, all kinds of stuff with that thing. And I kind of understand why they haven't brought another one to the market. I mean, with every TV you see nowadays, it's got some smart functionality built in. So yeah, a lot of people were just kind of skipping that using a built-in Roku or Android on the TV itself. But I've always loved the Shield TV and I would definitely buy another one if they updated it. But yeah, that's it. Just let me know in the comments below what your favorite NVIDIA product is. And on February 1st, I'll use a random comment picker. Again, I'm not going to ask you for any Venmo. I'm not going to ask you for any money for shipping or anything like that. Make sure it's my verified account and I'll go ahead and pick a random winner. I'll ship it right out to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions about the Jetson Aura Nano Super or you want to see anything else running on the unit, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.